What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build this scrap wood end table. So this is basically like a really thick ingrain cutting board. I actually got this idea from Instructables. They produced a video building a very similar project, but they used a totally different process. So I'll have a link in the video description if you wanna check that out, but uh, let's go ahead and get started with the build. If you've seen my video on building an ingrain cutting board, this process will look pretty familiar to you. So I've accumulated a lot of scrap wood over the past few months and actually still have some of the wood from that pile I bought off of Craigslist for the ingrain cutting boards. So after rounding up my scraps, I started cutting them to rough length. The lengths here should be relatively random as that's part of the look of this table. My end table ended up at about 23 inches tall, so I cut the four leg pieces to that size and then cut the other strips in the 10 to 18 inch range. Once the strips were cut to rough length, I flattened two sides of each strip on the planer. This makes sure the strips have a nice tight glue line when I go to glue them up later on. With enough strips for one layer cut and planed, I started to arrange them in a pattern I liked. I just made sure to alternate wood types, trying to keep things as random as possible. The width of each layer was based on the capacity of my planer, which is 15 inches in my case. After the glue up, these will need to be flattened on the planer, so you gotta make sure not to make these layers wider than your planer will accept. Next, I just kept repeating these steps over and over until I had enough layers to make a table. This is a really time consuming process with a lot of repetition, but the end result is pretty awesome and it's a great way to use up a bunch of scraps. So with the first batch of layers arranged, I glued the strips together. One tip here is to make sure the glue isn't near the bottom edge of the strips, as any of the squeeze out will be pretty much impossible to get to and will be visible on the final table. So with a few layers in the clamps, I just kept working on breaking down scraps, planing two faces and cutting them to size of the miter saw. I made sure to try and keep pieces of a similar thickness together so less wood would be wasted during the planing step. Once I had a few more layers arranged, I clamped them up and just continued this process until I had enough for my table. All right, so this is what you'll be left with after the glue up. So basically you've got one side that's relatively flat uh, because that was against the clamps and then one side that is not flat. So uh, we're gonna need to flatten these now. So uh, the nice thing is this bottom surface is flat enough to where we can use it as a reference surface in the planer. And again, in the last step, you wanted to make these basically no wider than your planer will accept. So mine are right around 15 inches, a little bit less than that so that they can go through my planer. If you have a lunchbox style planer, you're gonna probably be in the 13 inch range. But uh, if you want a bigger table, you're just gonna build more blanks and then glue them together. But you are gonna be limited to basically a 13 inch width there. So uh, let's go ahead and get these flattened. So it took quite a few passes on the planer to bring these flat, but I eventually got every layer flattened. As you can see here, the closer each strip is to the same width, the less material has to be removed. So next I needed to get all the layers to the same width. I used my jointer to joint one edge and then ripped all the layers to the same width at the table saw. So while I'm ripping, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Saw Stop. I've had a Saw Stop table saw in my shop for about six months now, and I would never go back to another table saw. The added safety and peace of mind when I'm working in my shop alone is unparalleled. So now through the end of April 2017, Saw Stop's offering a free upgrade on new professional cabinet saw purchases. In the US and Canada, each customer who purchases a new professional cabinet saw will receive one of two available accessories, the overarm dust collection or the integrated mobile base, each worth 199 US dollars. Saw Stop saws pretty much never go on sale. So if you've been on the fence, no pun intended, jump on this promotion and get $199 of accessories free of charge. To learn more, check out the link in the video description below. So after getting all the layers to the same width, I cross cut each layer to clean up the top and square up that edge. With the layers squared up, it was time for assembly. So I used dominoes to help with alignment, but biscuits or dowels would work well for this too. I just wanted to reduce as much slipping as I could since cleaning up the ingrain on the top would be a pain later on. So once I had the domino mortises cut into each layer, I glued them together. Once again, I made sure to keep the glue towards the top half of each layer to try to minimize squeeze out in the bottom half of the table. I also made sure to focus plenty of glue on the top edges of the table because I didn't want any gaps on the tabletop. 
So after a few hours, I removed the clamps and scraped off any glue squeeze out from the top and sides. And next I needed to flatten the sides and the top. Since this was too big to pass through any of my machines, I used my trusty low angle jack plane for this. Since I used dominoes for alignment, I didn't have a ton of material to remove, but the jack plane made quick work of any material I did need to remove. So once the plane had the sides flattened, I hit all the sides with a card scraper to really smooth things out. And if you haven't used a card scraper before, just get one. They're an incredible tool for removing tool marks from the surface of projects, and they save you a lot of time when it comes to sanding. They're also only like $10, so definitely get one. They're an awesome hand tool to have in your shop. Next, on the table saw, I cross cut the legs to their final length using my miter gauge. It's best to wait to do this until everything's assembled so that any slippage during the glue up can be accounted for. Next, I chamfered the top, sides, and feet of the table with my block plane. Chamfering the feet helps to keep the feet from splintering when the table is drug across the floor or anything like that. Next came a lot of sanding, so luckily the card scraper saved me quite a bit of sanding on the sides of the table, but I still had a good bit on the top. I did roughly flatten the top with my low angle jack plane off camera, there was still a lot of work to be done. Sanding ingrain is extremely time consuming, and I just started with 80 grit and worked my way up to 180 grit. With the sanding done, it was time for finishing. So for the bottom of the table, I couldn't really think of a way to get finish into all of the small areas besides using a spray finish, so I used a spray polyurethane for this. For the top and sides of the table, I used a wipe-on polyurethane and applied three coats in total. I let them dry for about three hours between coats and sanded with 400 grit sandpaper between coats. Once the finish dried, I added some felt feet to the bottom of the legs and the table was done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This was a pretty simple build. It was a little bit time consuming, but uh, really the material cost was basically nothing. I just used scrap wood and finish I already had on hand. So uh, just a great way to use up some of those scraps you have hanging around. And I think it's a really cool piece, definitely a conversation piece, and it should last for many, many years to come. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this every Tuesday. Also, if you wanna see the materials I use for this, I have links to everything in the video description below. And last, if you want to support me a little further, see some behind the scenes content, all that kind of stuff, check me out on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash craftedworkshop. All right, thanks again for watching, guys. And until next time, happy building.